Welcome to the Wellbeing Room. Today I am super excited to have George Cowell as my guest. George is a business coach, a mentor and author who infuses his teachings with a unique spiritual perspective. He has helped hundreds of coaches, consultants, healers and course creators on their path to creating sustainable and joyful businesses, including myself, yes. Um, George is a beacon of light in the craziness of the online world. His values of generosity, warm-heartedness and authenticity shines through in his content and in the classes that he teaches. George has published five books spanning the topics of authentic business, authentic content marketing, joyful productivity, authentic selling, and his most recent title, which I have here, Soul Gym, Simple Principles for Spiritual Fitness. Um, I have been a devotee of George's teaching since 2019. I've done several of his online courses and I'm also part of his Master Heart Group mentoring program. Through George's guidance and also with the encouragement of others in the Master Heart program, I have been able to extend further into my yoga business and also launch this podcast that you are listening to. I am grateful for his time today and I'm really looking forward to our discussion. Welcome, George. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that intro was recorded. I have to, <laughs> I have to take notes. <laughs> I'll send you a copy of it. <laughs> Is there anything you wanted to add to the intro before we get started? Uh, no, I, that was great. I'm really looking forward to our conversation, wherever, wherever it takes us. I hope this is helpful to the listener, the yeah, viewer. Yeah, absolutely. So do I. So um, I'm going to just start with my questions. May as well just get yeah. straight into it. So um, I love great. how you bring a, a spiritual element to your work as a business and marketing coach. Um, this is such a unique quality in this field where people are usually encouraged to, you know, create marketing funnels and manipulate their audience with FOMO tactics. So how did you come to bring spiritual away awareness to the work that you do? Mm, yeah. Thank you for asking that. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. So I, and I, and I hope what I'm going to share is going to uh, you know inspire others to, to deepen their implementation of their values, you might say into, into their own work too. So, um, I think, I think we'll start with like what, how we all usually approach work, which is got to get it done. Mm. Um, you know, when it's, when it's a chore and there's a task or it's a business, then you're kind of doing work because you, you can make money obviously. And also, you know, those of us who are good hearted people says, Oh, I gotta, I gotta do my marketing so that I can. Uh, serve my clients. That's the meaningful stuff. That's where I shine. That's where uh, I, I really come alive with my, you know, coaching or healing or mentoring or facilitation or consulting or or or, or whatever work that people do with their clients and their and their um, customers. It's like that's really where I shine. I just the, the marketing stuff, the administrative stuff. That's just like a chore. That's kind of like a means to an end. That's sort of a necessary evil. Uh, I got to go th get through this so I can get to the promised land of being alive, doing my work. And then I'm like, okay, all right. Now, if that's the case, then the vast majority of your working time is going to be just doing chores, right? It's going to be like, like suck it up, uh, you know, don't come alive, you know, beat, beat, beat that. What, what's the difference? What's the opposite of coming alive, right? Like being dead or, you know, being, yeah. being a zombie, right zombie right yeah. zombie apocalypse right with mm -hmm. with the with people who are who are disengaged at work which you know year after year decade after decade the the gallup research keeps saying people are disengaged from work people are mm -hmm. um are are you know, most people especially in corporates right in yeah. corporate you know com big companies most people are disengaged meaning they don't enjoy their day-to-day -day work um it's it's crazy it's it's at least 60 percent who are like disengaged or highly disengaged um if not i think it's like even um even up to like 80 percent is like at least slightly disengaged or something yeah. like that so um long story short i uh kind of had this um spiritual breakdown breakthrough uh about 10 years ago now so 2012 to 2014 that around that time frame i kind of stumbled upon some books and some videos that uh, made me uh, get in touch with this idea of 
um, does does consciousness go on after after this life? Now, I know people listening to this will have different worldviews, and that's great. Um, but from and and I think everybody needs to find essentially everybody, no matter your spiritual religious beliefs, must find a source of deep well being that you that's like a foundational rock of your of your psychological life you know and if you have that foundational rock of of, of the source of well-being then and the more you um i guess ground your life on that foundational rock that's stable this you know then you really can expand it's kind of like you know you well it's it's just like building any any structure the the more solid the rock bed the more the higher you can go and i believe that all of us can find that foundational source whatever you want to call it some people will use the word god other people will will say um higher self and some people might even say society you know like like the, the goodness of humanity right so whatever that is if I I basically rediscovered that about ten years ago, um, which was a few years into my business, I was doing the mainstream stuff that you talked about. I was doing the marketing as a means to an end, and and trying to. Uh, this is what marketing is, right? Manipulating people to buy our stuff so that we can be good people when we work with them. We can be truly, you know, alive, right? But now I'm like, no, wait, 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 hold on. If if much of our life is doing the marketing or administration or bookkeeping or whatever it is that leads up to the moment of working with a client, if much of our working life, waking life is that, why can't that part of our life be spiritual too? Why is it only when I'm with a client then I'm alive and fully fulfilled and actualized? Well, why can't it be actualized and fully fulfilled and have a spiritual component to my bookkeeping or to my, I got to write this marketing email or create my website or f solve this tech challenge so that I can, you know, get my, my, my message out there, whatever. So, so basically that um, opening for me of, wow, I found that deep source of sustained and eternal well-being that I can tap into at any moment it changed my life, of course, um, and it changed. More importantly, in this discussion, it changed my business and how I did it, and and this and so so based on this foundation, I was able to uh, become more detached from the results. I could surrender in a deep psychological, emotional way. Surrender the results, and and just focus instead on the moment of whatever I'm doing this could be my last moment, you know, I, I mean, that, that was kind of what the message that, that, that came to me and kind of wouldn't let me go. It's like, what if, what if, what if you had, the, the message was for me was what if you had six months left to live? It sounds like a very scary message, but it just was really, I don't know why it's just some, some voice or something uh, that I, that idea came to me and wouldn't let me go for like a year. I waited six months, and of course, I survived the six months. I didn't have any diagnosis or anything, but I, but I, but I obviously lived past that. But that those six months or the year made me practice every day. Like, well, then I'm going to give it my all, or at least I'm going to. If I'm going to drop, <laughs> if I'm going to drop dead in this next moment, I want to drop dead in the in the spiritual way. <laughs> you know, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to live this moment with as much um, connection to that source of well being as possible and then i feel like that's a really meaningful life you know mm. no matter what's happening right now my, if my my computer doesn't work or this message i'm going to send doesn't go anywhere well, what it doesn't matter it doesn't matter like this moment if i could be connected to the source of wealth isn't, isn't that what matters the most you know yeah so mm. i think that it's really important i mean a really important point that you make because you know you said how you know people just want to do the work with their clients and and I think, so, yeah. you know, that's what the work that people live for. Um, but I, I don't know, for me, even as a yoga teacher, you know, that's that's like 
the best part of the day, you know, teaching a yoga sure, class. But even sure. still in a yoga class, I can, my mind can wander or I could be thinking about something else. Of course. And I think by, by bringing that spiritual practice to the everyday tasks, to the, the chores, to, like you say, the, the bookkeeping, what have you, um, will strengthen, eventually strengthens the muscle as well for when you're actually one-on-one -on -one with a client too, because you're, you're getting deeper and deeper and deeper and more connected. Um, and so, yeah everything becomes yes absolutely better. i totally mm -hmm. agree with you yeah and and um yeah it's like it's like there's a spectrum of uh life you know if we, if we look at the spectrum of our experience in day-to-day mm -hmm. -day life it's like you can either uh, life can be pleasant mm -hmm. um enjoyable yeah. or life can be unpleasant and not enjoyable um and it's like we can't no matter how much we plan our life and 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 our, our fortunate, lucky, whatever, you can't have life be enjoyable and pleasant and on 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 plan, you know, go with the plan 24-7, 365. It's impossible, no matter how how much money or how much, you, it doesn't matter. Like everybody in the whole world, no matter wealth and circumstances are going to have some experience, you know, mm -hmm. on the side that they don't want. And, yeah. and, and it's like, it's like, well, if that's the case, then should we then what if we found the solution right to still experience joy even when life objectively isn't mm. supposed to be pleasant and, mm. and and whatever you know just yeah. like if i if i'm not a bookkeeper and yeah. i don't like bookkeeping and i'm and many of many of the folks listening right now are probably not not super into numbers or like love love dealing with that stuff well if you don't and 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 you have to do bookkeeping for example or doing a taxes could that possibly be transformed as a moment into into joy mm. and spiritual you know experience mm. and i say yes absolutely because i've experienced it myself and i i know i know everybody has to some degree as well yeah yeah no it's beautiful ah thank you so much you've got some lovely rainbows coming onto you <laughs> from the sun <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah you know um there's the there's a thing that uh yeah the little thing i put on the put on the window here yeah, cool. <laughs> my, my my wife gave it to me and it's like ah oh. you know so th <laughs> those of you who are those of you who are watching the mm. uh watching the video we'll be able to see that <laughs> yeah exactly yeah lovely all right um i'm going to move on to the next question so your latest book which i have here called soul gym is a selection of writings from your facebook page of the same name what prompted you to start soul gym the page itself um yeah. and how has it evolved well i yes and thank you for asking and i still remember um you know when i started the page a couple of years ago you were one of the first I felt like you were one of the first meaningful commenters there. And I was so grateful, Thank you know, you. to kind of see see you see you there on a regular basis. I'm like, oh, I have someone who's actually reading this regularly. <laughs> so you've you've been there from the beginning, you know, yeah, cool. and I'm really grateful. Um what what prompted me was that, well, okay, I've always, of course, enjoyed talking about spiritual uh matters, personal development. And it, you know, when I most of my working day isn't talking about that. I'm talking about mark how uh, how can people market themselves and 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 all that kind of create a business. And I'm like, okay, but I would like to have an outlet for my musings about personal development. So then I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start this separate page. And it was actually a bit of a mark. It was it was in part I, I was able to justify this spending time doing because it was in part a marketing experiment. I said, okay, could I build a new brand new audience in the personal growth space in the spiritual um you know healing or transformational space without connecting it to my current name my current brand my current business so i that's why i started the soul gym facebook page as a separate page nobody even knew it. i said i'm doing a secret project i didn't tell anybody george cow didn't tell anybody so i started that page and i used you know facebook ads to just like i teach people to do to grow to, to grow that page from zero to you know, um, to hundreds of regular readers uh, on a regular, so, and commenters as well. So that's, it was an outlet. And I, I, I want to encourage everybody, you know, if whatever hobby uh, you have, um, you know, you can't justify doing it during the working day, maybe, but please, you know, what I did, Leah, was I spent only 90 minutes a week on the soldier project. The 90 minutes a week allowed me to do some writing, put it on the Soul Gym page, spend a little bit of time using Facebook ads to distribute it to the right people. 
Um, and then I eventually started doing a bit of video, all that 90 minutes a week. And so I want to encourage like everybody, even if your, your current day-to-day -day work isn't your favorite, you can spend 90 minutes a week or two hours a week. If you possibly can, you can find that time to, to grow a side hustle essentially. Right. And, 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 and do, doing the kind of topic that you really enjoy. And now to, to this now, of course, today, soul gym is not only a Facebook page anymore. It's now a book as well as a coaching program, right. That I've launched and it wouldn't have, I couldn't have launched the soul gym coaching program, you know, three, five years ago, nobody would have wanted to sign up. And now because of the the continued writings and the you know so um i i encourage everyone to to pursue your f most fulfilling side hustle <laughs> yeah well it's definitely it's definitely grown and evolved over yeah. the last few years so that's wonderful um and we will talk a little bit about your program towards the end but um I want to talk a bit more about the actual content that you've been writing. Yeah, please. Um, so, you know, you cover topics like fear and love, joy, suffering, reframing negative experiences and things like that. So I guess what inspires you to write or speak on those different spiritual topics and, and why are they important to you? Well, what, what inspires me is my own, I guess, my own life. <laughs> All of those <laughs> things you said are what I'm experiencing, you know, on a day to day and everybody does. And so I think that's, that's what, and I think that's true for um, any uh, authentic creator, you know, authentic content creator is they write or speak or record or draw from their lived experience, um, part one, right? Part two of that is they do it also believing that someone out there also can relate to this and possibly be helped or healed by that expression, that authentic expression as well. So I believe that's true for everybody listening to this and watching this. It's like you have, in, you know, now when it comes to personal growth, spiritual, you know, growth, the co most common thing I hear people say is, well, what I'm have to say, a, a thousand other people have said it and they, they've said it in better, you know, better ways. That's true. That's probably true. You know, objectively speaking, that's probably true. Probably more than a thousand actually. But the thing is, you haven't said it yet. And as we all know, like when you, I mean, I, I believe that's why we're here in, in this uh, earth experience, you know, this, this soul gym of an earth experience is we wanted to go through the experience ourselves. Sure, you can, you can learn from other souls who have gone through, you know, ups and downs and, and the journey, the adventure of life. But we wanted to do it ourselves. Me, I want to do it myself. That's why I incarnated here, in my, in my opinion. And that's why I believe. It. So it's like the same thing with, with any lived experience. It's like you can listen to someone's story all day long, but if you haven't lived it, it's not as meaning, deeply meaningful. And if you tell your lived experience, you get to experience that fulfillment and that meaning in a more powerful way. Because by telling the story, you uh study it right you you analyze it from different angles and you you kind of pull out the 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 the, the treasure that you might not have pulled out if you didn't study your own experience so that's why i did it i mean i did it beginning selfishly as i need to study my own experience i need to uh, reflect on it and i might as well reflect you know, journal publicly, right? I believe very much in pu public journaling whenever possible. I need to journal, reflect about it publicly because it gives me some accountability to, to do it on a regular basis. If I if I start doing it once a week, hopefully my audience will expect it once a week, or at least I can imagine that my audience expects it once a week. So I'm going to use that as an accountability tool for me to publicly and, and to consistently reflect on my, 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 my own personal growth believing that someone out there <laughs> like Leia might occasionally find some gem there for, for her own use, you know? <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, George. I'm going to move on to my next question, <laughs> which is all about frameworks. And I know you love frameworks because you teach a whole course on frameworks. <laughs> and I noticed that you're currently posting content on Soul Gym on your spiritual alphabet, where you go through each letter of the alphabet and you post on a topic starting with each letter, for example, A, 
for awareness, B for bless every moment, C for compassion. Can you share about the process you went through for coming up with this idea and would you be bringing out another book based on this content? <laughs> yeah, no, I thank you for um, helping me uh, promote a book that isn't even out yet because <laughs> yes, I absolutely will be coming out with a book. Now, Now, the, the book is going to be um, here's here's what's I, I think it more interesting about. I mean, yes, the book is going to have all those essays that I'm writing right now, or those art you know, post those posts. Um, but it's going to be called, I think, I probably it's going to be called something called something like my spiritual alphabet or something like that. And and the beginning of the book, the intro is going to basically say, hey, this is my spiritual alphabet. What about yours? Essentially, it's like. I'm going to encourage everyone just based on my own, you know, modeling of it to say, why don't you come up with, you know, based on what you're reading here, could you, you know, because of course every letter, um, and now you might say, well, how did I come up with this idea of ABC? I think here's, here's how I came up with it. I, um, I really love uh, memory, like um, using uh, memory tools. I mean, I, I'm not an expert on, on on memory tools, but for some reason, one day I, I, I just said, um, I want to remember a couple of values, like words. And I said, well, how can I remember these things? Well, let me come up with letters that, that fit. So that's just really how the spiritual alphabet started. It's like, okay, yeah, I want to, I want to, in fact, you know, awareness, you know, the letter A, awareness, wasn't probably originally called awareness. I think it was called something else. But I, I had to use the um, find a way to fit it into the alphabet. So those of you watching the video will be able to enjoy Flint, uh, Leia's dog, which one of my one of my favorite beings in the world to, to look at. So yes, please, please do watch the video and enjoy. Um, so uh, yeah, so basically, um, I started to make a list of these are the, these are my values these are the these are uh, you, you could say these are my values or also these are the the the, the elements of my well-being like these are the tools my own personal tools for my well-being and i want to um remember them and i also want to continually revisit them so the alphabet is a brilliant tool for that because it's like Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna reflect on one letter a week. I actually I actually used to be doing this one a day. <laughs> it used to be one a day, and then the last couple of days of the month are like just you know I'm, I can revisit the whole alphabet, and just kind of think about it. But now it's more like one a week. I reflect day after day on on particular like for example this week where I'm on I'm on G uh, for uh, and I'm using the the, the word gentleness and. Um, I want to thank uh, our mutual colleague Bing's Huang for inspiring us with this idea of gentleness. She's a gentleness ambassador. She calls herself. Um, so, so yeah. So reflecting on gentleness this week and 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 what how does that apply? Um, and of course, I, I then reflect on my own the opposite of that, which is forcefulness and how how am I being too forceful or too overexerting about certain things and how can I bring more gentleness? Anyway, so. So it's it's wonderful because I get to reflect all week and every day I add a little tweet. I have a Soul Gym uh, tw Twitter account where it's like every day I require myself to at least add, you know, the nice thing about Twitter is that it's only 280 characters, right, up maximum per tweet. So I basically every day I have a homework for myself. It's like, okay, what's at least one thing, one quick thing I could say? For this for, for this week, it's about gentleness. Like today, what's one quick thing I could say about gentleness? Uh, ideally, from my own lived experience today, and so I will that, kind of tweet that out, tweet that out, tweet that. And then at the end of the week, I I collect all those tweets and I turn that into an article about gentleness, which becomes a chapter in the book in the future book. So the nice thing about this is 26, 26 um, character out you know letters is exactly half the year. So it's wonderful because I get to revisit each of these virtues, values, you know, well-being tools twice a year. And every time I revisit them, it reminds me because it's like I forget about them, obviously, just like any any human being forgets about things. And it's like, no, I get to revisit this twice a year. Oh, so have that's a new what perspective I'm, as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like every time I revisit, there's going to be something something new or 
I, I I'm always open to changing a, a letter, you know, or mm. you know, every now and then. So yeah. yeah, no, it's a great idea. I love it. Um, I've got lots of thoughts in my head about this. I, I'm actually curious, <laughs> firstly, about how do you remind yourself to do that? You know, you say you choose a letter for each week, and you're going through the alphabet. Um, so do you like set yourself a reminder each morning? You're like mm -hmm. today is gentleness, so I'm going to think yeah, about yeah, yeah. that like how do you yeah. build that into your daily routine yeah yeah like the you're, you're absolutely right the reminder tool is important mm. so yes i do have them i do have a i have two reminders uh a day i mean i use my my, my to-do list i look at my to-do list every day and my to-do list has has two recurring items uh one in the morning which is what's the letter today and what's one thing i might want to say about this what's one one you know, a concept from from this value or this well being tool that I that I want to explore today. What's one facet of it that I want to I want to think about today and 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 try to live today, perhaps. Um, and and so that's the morning reminder. And then there's an end of day reminder, which says, "Well, go ahead and tweet your your one reflection today." Like, and sometimes it turns into more than one tweet, which is great. But but that's the only thing I require of myself is that and and Twitter is wonderful because, like I said, it's very naturally short, and um, I encourage everyone to, you know, consider doing this because Twitter here's here's this <laughs> a lot of people don't realize this about Twitter, if you start a Twitter account, and you don't tell anybody about it, and you don't use any hashtags, you just tweet messages, pretty much nobody will find it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I actually experimented with this, right? For like two months in the beginning of the Soul Gym account. I mean, if you if you look back, like it, beginning of Soul Gym account, I basically said, what if I didn't use any hashtags? So I just type things out without using the pound sign, the number sign, right? I don't use any hashtags. I just tweet these out. Will people find my account? And the answer is no. <laughs> Nobody, and even though I'm tweeting on things that are quite, I guess, quote unquote popular because these are personal development ideas and you know, quite popular words, nobody's going to find it. So in other words, you could, even if you didn't take your account and put it as private, even if you keep it, keep it public, just so you have some kind of public accountability there, still no one's going to see it and you could still feel safe, I guess, because you can look at the stats, right? Every, every Twitter account has stats, even if you don't, you know, if it's just a person, it doesn't matter. You look at the stats, I look at the stats for each tweet, it's like three impressions, zero impressions. And it's like three, who, who are the three people it, probably three bots because nobody during those two months where I didn't tell anybody, I tweeted many, many times, even though some, 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 some tweets had three or seven impressions, not a single person clicked like or commented or anything. And so I, I'm guessing that the, the usual three to 10 impressions for any tweet are like pretty much bots or people who just happen to scroll past things. They don't even know who you are. So they keep scrolling. So, uh, but now, of course, I have announced uh, uh, announced this uh, to to my people. So I'm getting a few a few a few likes here and there. Mm. So yeah. So it's a good place for anonymous journaling. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. Anonymous is right because you don't have to say your name on, on the mm. Twitter account. It yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, I love that. And just one other idea for the book. You know, I was just thinking as you were talking about the alphabet, and you're saying, you know, what's what's the reader's version of a, you know, um, and yeah. I just thought you could have like, a, you know, your page with what you've written and then a, a page with some, you know, prompts for people some to, words. to yeah. journal their own totally. thoughts and ideas. Yeah I, I, yeah, I had to, I had to pick because I could have gone with appreciation. Mm. I could have gone with, um, actually the, 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 those two awareness appreciation were my, were my top words. I don't remember what the other one, but every single letter has multiple cool, you know, concepts that you could explore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to when that book comes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, give it, give it, uh, uh, you know, probably six more months from now. Yeah. You know? Oh, wow. That's soon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beginning of the year. That's what I'm targeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. All right. Let's move on. So it would be remiss of me not to mention your energy reboot practice. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> which is a foundational practice of, you know, checking in with yourself throughout the day. And it's something you, yes. you've honed over many years. Um, yeah. You generally, it's like a, intentional breathing and a quick stretch and some self-talk, I believe. Um, yes. So simple can be done really quickly. Um, I've initially had some resistance to doing the energy reboot and I'm not sure why, but um, 
But the last couple of weeks, I've really sort of tried to embrace it a bit more and I'm finding that it's really helpful. And I find the prompt when I work with you in Focusmate, um, when I see you do it, that also <laughs> encourages me to do it. Yes, so, yes, yes. So that's yes. really helpful. Um, yeah. But I know this practice has evolved over time for you. Like you started, it was a bit longer, you know, it took a couple of minutes, I think, and you've now sort yeah, of really honed it. Yeah. So um, tell us a bit about that process. And then also, you know, what are the well-being benefits for someone who incorporates it into their daily routine? Yeah, great. I, I, I love how you summarize things. I mean, I was like, yeah, that's brilliant. Brilliant summary right there. And thanks for these great questions. So the energy reboot, uh, for those who want to kind of watch me do um, the demo of it, you can Google energy reboot as a phrase, and probably my video will pop up uh, somewhere on the first page. Um, and yeah, so go ahead and watch that. Uh, but basically, just like Leah was, was saying, it is simply intentional breathing with some self-talk and, and a stretch. That's exactly it. And um, so basically like, well, the reason why I, I did it was, um, I realized that it's really useful as a well-being practice to kind of check in with oneself throughout the day. Um, because if we don't check in with ourselves, what usually happens is when we're not aware of our breath, for example, a lot of us like forget to breathe sometimes or or we we our, our our breathing is is not generally not deeper which is what's good for our bodies um and it's um sometimes like i said when we're especially when we're stressed or or, or you're trying to get something done we barely breathe and so the energy reboot reminds us to breathe i mean the, the simplest energy reboot is simply gosh if you just took three gentle deep breaths right now which all of us can do you know um you'll be surprised even that little tiny thing shifts your energy and uplifts your energy a little bit you know makes you feel slightly more well than before and so i said great the deep gentle deep breathing is wonderful what if i added um some hand movements and and, and some self-talk so it's like when I when I do my breaths again. I have now now I have three different versions as of this recording, right? Of the energy reboot. Um, I did the first version for a couple of years. I think it was somewhere around 2015 to 2017. I started doing it. I lost track. I did it until like 2020, somewhere around that. So I did it for a couple of years, and then I did the energy reboot two, the second version. I did it from 2020 to 2022. Did a couple of years. And now I'm kind of moving on to energy reboot three. I think everyone should start with reboot one because uh, there's a certain power there. Um, and it kind of gets more refined and gets more advanced as you go along. But essentially, it's all about just, you know, kind of holding holding your hand, your hands gently to like your heart or your, or your gut, uh, where, wherever you want to hold your hands to kind of <laughs> ground yourself to say, ah, I'm, I'm you know, my, my body is supporting me. And not just my body supporting my, 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 my mind and my life, but also there is some kind of invisible support. You can even just, if you don't believe in kind of, you know, spirit guides or whatever, um, you could just say that the, the earth is supporting my body you know, without the earth and the sun and, and oxygen, you know, the, the body couldn't exist. So it's like just feeling that and the gratitude for that. And then um, the self-talk, well, we've already done some self-talk there, but it's usually useful to use just a word or a few words or a few phrases so it's easy to remember, like a mantra or something. So so it could be like like gratitude, you know, is a is a something you can hold your 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 heart and then deep breathe and say. And you know, it, it, total security was one from the energy reboot one that I did for a couple of years. I really like that. And um, you know, um uh, trust is one that I'm using very frequently now as a word. And um, and so the, the the benefits of it, so first of all, I just to complete the the the, you know, the process of it, yeah, intentional breathing, self-talk, and and sort of hand movements. The, re the other reason why we do hand movements, and now with energy group three, there's definitely the stretch is important, uh, two and three both, um, is that it's a very obvious practice like 
you, you can't just go, oh, it's just breathing. And then you forget about it. But it's like, oh, if I'm doing something with my hands, I actually have to stop typing or I stop doing whatever I'm doing. And then, you know, so it's a very obvious practice for, like that, you know, you're doing it. And, um, and then the last thing I'll say about it, and then I'll talk about benefits is it's important to do it frequently. That's one of the most important things about the energy reboot, because it's fine if you, if you, if you meditate in the morning or do yoga or dance or, 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 or walk in the forest or wh whatever you do that helps you feel well. But like my suggestion to people is you need something else to do throughout the whole day to keep on feeling well, instead of just like, you, you, you feel well in the morning and then you, from there it's all downhill. <laughs> and then maybe in the evening you have another wellness practice that makes you feel well before bed. That's great too. But it's like, what about the middle of the day? It's like, it's like, that's why my energy reboot, get this, I do it. Now this is true for one energy reboots, one, two, and three. I do it at least three times an hour. I know that sounds incredible, like so often. But I do it because I'm used to it now. I do it at least three times an hour during the working day. Now I'm not doing it, you know, in the evening when I'm, you know, having dinner with my wife and watching TV or whatever. I'm not like suddenly go pa pause the TV. Let me do. No, I'm not doing that, right? So it's just during my working day, which is where most of us are more likely to have some stress, right, or to forget about our breathing and our wellness. I, I do it three times an hour, and the easiest way is like okay, beginning of the hour. You know, the, I, I do focus mate. Those of you who don't know Focusmate, please look it up. Uh, Leia, Leia and I both are on Focusmate a, a lot, so you'll find us there. Um, at the beginning of my my working hour, I okay, energy reboot time, and then the twenty minute mark, right? You, you look at the clock. Oh, a twenty minute mark. Have I did, done an energy reboot since since the beginning of the hour? Oh, I haven't. Do it now. At the forty minute mark, have I done it since the last time? I that's the twenty minute mark. I haven't. Okay, good. Do it now. And there's no blame if you forget to do it. If I forget to do it, sometimes I go 45 minutes. I'm like, wait, this, what have I been? I haven't done. I haven't checked in with myself, and, and that's fine. You know, sometimes it's hours. Uh, usually, it's not like that anymore. But it's just just like meditation, right? Like if you if you lose track and your mind goes into whatever spiral of thinking, you just oh, I caught my mind. Oh, oh, let me bring it back to the breath. And so same thing with energy reboot. Oh, I I forgot to do it. That's okay. Just do it again gently come back to it. So the, the well-being benefits, I mean, just as you all can imagine, if you check in with your state of being multiple times a day, let alone multiple times an hour, imagine your ability to just redirect yourself, re-regulate yourself again, right? So the well, that that is obvious benefit. But in terms of the benefits of even like holding your hands to your heart, or, 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 or the stretch. I mean, you can obviously tell there's physical benefits from, from this. Breathing has physical benefits and emotional and, and, and my mental benefits. And then finally, I would say there are spiritual benefits to this. Like, again, I, everyone has a different worldview. Um, I happen to, to use the word God to connect to my ultimate source of well-being. Um, and I, the way I say it is, does... God deserve 30 seconds from me, three times an hour. Does God deserve that? <laughs> of course. You know, God deserves my entire life's worship, you know. Now, again, if God, the word God and worship, those words uh, might, might offend some. So I'll say, do, does your well-being deserve 30 seconds, three times an hour? Does your well-being deserve that? Of course. You are a magnificent being, I believe, spiritual being who deserves deep wellness and joy all throughout the day. And so wouldn't doesn't your higher being, uh, doesn't your doesn't just your lower being deserves it too. <laughs> it's all your all your entire being deserves it. Yeah, so absolutely. that's that's why yeah. that's how I, I I remind myself, no, no, I don't care how important, so-called important this thing in front of me is. I don't care. I mean, my well-being or God or what deserves the 30 seconds right now. Now, if I'm in a meeting, obviously, this is where Energy Reboot 3 comes in. It's like Energy Reboot 3 has become really refined and I can do the Energy Reboot in like a few seconds. And, and I'm in a meeting right now. I've done it several times right now, but you couldn't tell because it's gotten this kind of refined. But start with one and then you kind of pr proceed through the <laughs> through the stages, you know, so. Yeah, it's like white belt through to black belt, isn't it? <laughs> 
That's very, right. Yeah, very yeah, much exactly. A black belt in the energy reboot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So many. It's been so many years. Th- tens of thousands of yeah. repetitions. You know. Yeah, yeah. and I, I do like doing it now. I've, I'm using my phone. I'm setting like 15 minute timer when I do a yeah. work yeah. a work session. So it's yeah, it's helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for good. sharing that. Yeah. Um, coming towards the end, but I still have a couple of things I want to ask you. Sure. Sure. Um, so uh, this and this is one thing I really love now, like, you know, I'm not really a God person. I grew up as, you know, in the Jewish tradition, but I don't really follow sure. anymore. But um, sure. I remember you posting on Soul Gym a, a few times, a couple of different videos where you talked about and wrote about the sandwich prayer. Um, and I just want to note that, you know, you can substitute God for whatever suits you, like universe sure. or yeah. source and, and what have you. But uh, I'd really love you to explain quickly or as quickly as you can the sandwich prayer and maybe give us a really quick example of that for our listeners and yeah yeah <laughs> you're putting me on the spot because i'm trying to remember exactly <laughs> which really prayer good. that was what was the sandwich prayer it's do, um, do, do your do one of your brilliant summaries for us oh okay well mind. it's basically where you just start off with gratitude you know yes. thank you yes. universe for maybe i'll yes. be the one giving the example you know for bringing yeah. me to this point and you know yeah, yeah. knowing more than what i do about where i need to be in my life yes. um yes. and then and then the middle bit is like maybe asking for something you know can you guide me further on the right path right. or yes and then, yes and then the ending is like again just finishing with that gratitude again yes for, for yeah <laughs> thank so. you thank you for the reminder because <laughs> I've, I've written so many things i'm like oh what, which one was that yeah. um you know funny thing the, the the fact, that, thank you again, thanks for reminding me, because the funny thing is that actually is the foundation of Energy Reboot 2. Oh, okay, yeah. That actually is Energy Reboot 2, because mm-hmm. Energy Reboot 2 is, um, you know, starts with a breath of thanking God, universe, source, higher self, um, consciousness, the world, uh, for having brought us here through all the ups and downs of life. I mean, I get emotional just kind of thinking about it like 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 we've each gone through so much haven't we like so much um and and yet we're here like like some it's been we've been brought here like we're okay right now in this moment we're okay like and not just we're okay i mean we've we've learned from so much of that like we wouldn't have learned if it hadn't been through for all of that so um by the way, I want to apologize for um, the sun being in my face. Maybe it's a little too bright, but you could just you could just say that um, uh, talking about all this stuff has engulfed me in spiritual brightness or something. <laughs> it's, it's just the afternoon sun. <laughs> and Leah, if you want to, for the for the viewers' sake, uh, you know, well, of course, the viewers can just hide the video and just listen to it. But if you want to, if you want to um, spotlight uh, or despotlight my video, you can do that. Anyway, so yeah, the first the first part of the sandwich prayer or energy boot two is the gratitude for having been brought here through all the ups and downs, through all the ups too. I mean, so many beautiful and um, ecstatic experiences in our life. Like that was been gifted to us too. You know, it's not all our doing, right? It's it's so much, it depends on so many other people and for intervene as Thich Nhat Hanh would say, like all of the support we've received that allowed us to have all these wonderful experiences. And like I said, you know, source or spiritual support too. So that's the first part. The second part is um, trust. You know, I I be, I've been brought all the way here, and I trust that you, God, source, or the world, will bring me all the way home. And there's going to be lots of ups and downs. We we can guess. Yes, there will be. And there will be some some downs that we can't even imagine right now. And if we knew about all those downs right now, we'd probably be quite anxious or you know distraught. But they will come just one at a time. And then the ups too. The ups will if we knew about all the ups, we'd be, be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for all those wonderful experiences. But they're just going to come one at a time. And we can trust that we be, we're going to just be brought through all of them. We just can be brought through all of them. And, and then that's the second part, so trust, essentially. And then the third part is presence. Um, I thank you. And that's the third part of the Andrew Wu, too. I thank you for being here right now. Like at, when I say thank you, I, I'm imagining even my spirit guides 
you know, like my, maybe I have an, I don't know who my spirit guide is, but if I have a main spirit guide, I imagine them placing their loving and warm and healing hands on my shoulders behind me right now, you know, with their giant wings or whatever they have. And I said, thank you for being here with me. I mean, my gosh, my spirit guides are so patient. You know, like they're here all, all throughout the day. I'm like, I'm sometimes I'm doing boring stuff and they're still here. You know, they're like, how are you, how are you willing and 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 happy to be here right now? It's amazing. Thank you. And I, I just imagine when I when I do this, I imagine healing as well. I'm like I, I and I often feel kind of chills, good chills throughout my body as I it's a, we're connected to the breath. Like, thank you for your healing and your support right here right now and i even as i do this i even kind of like touch my fingers to my hands to kind of imagine they're like holding my hands like they're here right now and uh so yes i've been doing this i guess i thank you for reminding me the sandwich prayer or energy reboot two now for the past couple years and it's been awesome it's been it's definitely brought me through many ups and downs in my business and um i feel uh i feel like um thanks to all of that i feel like i can accomplish anything i mean i can go through any any challenge because that connection to the foundation of well-being is that strong and i think that's really what i hope for everybody is as you practice your own version of energy reboot and please do make it your own version i mean i have had some readers write to me and says here here's my version i'm like great it looks quite different from the original energy reboots or any of my version, but I love that you have a version that's so deeply meaningful and grounded for you. Please do, please use it every day and multiple times a day, you know? So I hope that as you keep using the energy reboot, you will build more and more solid connection to that ground of all being, a ground of all wellness. And if also, you know, if you want to talk about this in the physical term, you're essentially creating a stronger neural connection in your brain of many different types of experiences. You keep connecting into wellness. Then you, therefore, you can go through anything. You know. Beautiful. Thanks, George. Thanks. For, and I'm sorry yeah. I put you on the spot there, but you, you recovered well. <laughs> that was a great well, no, I, I'm, I'm grateful for your reminder. I'm like, that's a, that was, that's a good phrase. Sandwich prayer. I should bring that yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, I think you should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, all right. So just a couple of things before we wrap up. Sure. Um, yeah. So you recently began your soul gym program, which yeah. you've described as a container for creators and coaches to be consistent in publishing content. Um, I'm not in the program, although I did have a bit of FOMO about it, <laughs> but I'm just doing so much else. And I really wanted to focus of on your, your TLC no, program, I, I which, is, yeah. which is my sort of core at the moment. Um, yes, yes, yes. But can you just quickly share a bit about the program and you know, what people hope to achieve from it, how long does it go for? And of yeah. course, you know, the big question is, are you going to run it again, maybe next year right. or the year after? <laughs> yeah, no, and, and thank you for saying that. And, and it's a good example that you're, you're not in the program feeling FOMO because you don't have to feel FOMO. If it is a good program, it's going to keep running for as long as <laughs> I, I can possibly run it. Um, it. And that's what I intend. I mean, the, if it is a good program, you don't ever have to worry about it because it'll it'll still be around whether I'm running it or someone else will run it because um, the structure of the program does give freedom if someone else wants to to one of the things that you'll you know listener, dear listener will will learn about me is I am very open source about my offerings, the things I put out there. I'm like, if you like what I'm doing, what I'm up to, please copy it as much as you want to. I copy it word for word. Um, if it's meaningful for you, who am I to stop you from doing something meaningful in your work? Why, why would I do that? You know, please copy my website word for word if you want to. Um, whatever's meaningful. Here. So, so yeah, if if it's if it's a good program, don't worry. It, it'll me or someone else will, will be running it. So the way it works is um, it's not a program where you come into my presence as a guru. And I bless you with my wisdom and you must go and do these steps. Otherwise you're not a good student or a devotee. No. So this is the difference. This is, this is the unique thing about soul gym is, is uh, it's kind of, well, to use the gym analogy, by the way, um, I haven't set foot in a gym for many, many years. So I, 
<laughs> I actually, I'm actually kind of like conflicted about the whole gym word in there. Um, it's just that one day I heard from one of my, one of the authors I really enjoy, um, Roberta Grimes. Uh, she she has written some books about the afterlife, and she just she just kind of this throw a line throw away line one day. She said, "Yeah, you know, this life is like an afternoon in the gym, where your spirit came and incarnated to use some you know machines." to work out the spiritual muscles and the machines are the experiences of life, you know, ups and downs. And, and then you, and then it's a very short, short time, you know, we're, we're, we're gone after this to the rest of our eternal life. And we are stronger because of this adventure, this experience in the, in the gym. I'm like, yeah, brilliant. I'm going to say life is a soul gym. And so I started using that, even though I'm not a workout person, but as I, as I understand <laughs> in, in most gyms, there's such some kind of a person called a personal trainer right I, and they you can hire them to like oversee your development right well in my program called soul gym i am not your personal trainer because i want you to become your own personal trainer so essentially in soul gym what people do is they come into the program and there are prompts there are prompts for helping you reflect on your each week because it, it's like a week by week program um, i mean every every single week you're asked to reflect on something that's of meaning to you, uh, some kind of spiritual principle or some experience or some um, maybe uh, challenge that you want to work through in terms of a, a higher perspective, right? So so every week you're, you're working on something that's of meaning to you, and then you write about it at the end of the week or, or speak about it or record something. But the requirement quote unquote, because we're all adults. I'm not, I don't, I don't chase anyone down and says, Hey, you didn't post your thing this week. I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't, I can't too busy to do that, but it's, 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 there's group accountability and there, you can get a gym buddy in our soul gym directory and stuff that keeps you accountable. So at the end of the week, you, you write, and you could just keep the writing within our soul gym private communities and, and not publicly if you want to, but a lot of people have been doing it publicly because they want to build an audience, a community of people who are following their journey. They, they enjoy that. So that's it. So we have prompts. I have plenty of prompts there, different kinds of questions to help you reflect. And I also invite Soul Gym members to add their suggested prompts. And so we've started developing a whole you know, member initiated prompts that people can choose from. So that's it. That's in, so, so, so the, the idea is that week by week, you're learning this muscle of self-study, literally self-study. You're studying your, your own life's experience from a higher or more quote unquote spiritual perspective so that all problems eventually all challenges can be seen from a higher place so hopefully that's a you'll have more well-being as a result of that you know so that's soul gym it's it's just a an accountability program for reflection and sharing and also there's um member initiated events people get together for you know meditation or uh, some other spiritual experience and and uh, it's all virtual you know it's all every people are all around the world um so anyway if that sounds interesting of course look it up um uh there should hopefully there you can put a link below the below the yeah, video below absolutely. the audio yeah. so yeah yeah is it is it for three months though or is it extended oh, oh oh so so it is um for as short or long as people want to do it you know okay. there well at, at the time of this recording i might have different like mm. packages in the future but at the time of this recording you can just do it month by month or you can do it a three month at three months at a time will get you you know kind of a lower price, um, or gosh if people don't enjoy it after a week or two they could absolutely you know mm. get a refund I mean I'm not gonna <laughs> so yeah so I just I want people to be really um, finding it a truly useful and meaningful mm. program for them yeah yeah that sounds wonderful thank you for sharing about it and I'll, the last thing I'll say if yeah. if this model works please feel free to do it on your own mm. right like you, you don't have to join my program you could. Take, take what I've just said and look at the description, program description if you want to and, and form your own little soul gym group, group or whatever you want to call it, mm. you know, and, and do it that way. Yeah. yeah. Might start a movement, George. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why not? Why yeah. not? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, it's almost time to wrap up, but I do like to ask my guests on the wellbeing room, what, what is one thing they can share that has helped like for instance, has helped you to improve well-being and get more out of life. You've already shared 
so much, uh, which is wonderful. But I'm just wondering if there's one sort of maybe quirky thing or something unusual perhaps that you'd like to share with our listeners and viewers that, that has helped you improve wellbeing and get more out of life. Get a pet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, You've got writings about this. that too. <laughs> get, a, get, get a pet. Uh, whatever pet you want to get is great. Um, and, or if you can't have a pet because you live somewhere you can't have one, get you know, nurture nurture a plant. You know, like like your your plant is your companion, and plants are obviously alive, and they uh, they do well when you speak to them. Right? There's studies that show that, um, and give them good intentions. And so, yeah, I really it's really a I'm not just saying that is for fun that's that's true you know yeah 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 no absolutely that's actually a really great suggestion and i love it and i can see you've got a few plants there in your room and yes i know you have a a cat and a dog just one cat yes cat and a dog and and uh, probably and and some silver fish in our house somewhere we (laughs) we we look lovingly on them when we see them you know yeah yeah. well it's better than i guess cockroaches i don't know (laughs) no no i I, that 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 i'm still that i'm still working through you can you can read read about that in the soul gym book yeah exactly i don't have any to practice with i'm kind of grateful i guess (laughs) yeah yeah oh thank you so much george it's been such um such a pleasure to have you in the well-being room today Thank you. It's and, um, been great. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed our conversation. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll see you around on Focus Mate or in another Master Absolutely. Heart call. But uh, until then, have a wonderful day. Yeah, thanks. You too. Thanks, everyone.